So when I saw cyber infrastructure, I kind of thought the, one of the goals would be to talk about the training centers and how they've changed over time. And here I'll start off with a little bit of context, talk about the high performance regulation program to give you some clue what we do in general, but then I'll kind of focus on some history of our computing centers. Uh, that kind of what we're doing today, and then some uh, changes we expect to make in the future years. Tremendous more focus in the last uh, last five or six years on software development 
and scalability of the application. Because that's where the real, the real bonus comes in here. My community, it's all about time to solution. How quickly do I get my answer? And if you don't have scalable software, you aren't going to get the answer that much faster out of a bigger group. So today we have uh, six of you picnic centers. Soon we'll have five. One of those will close down uh, within a few months. They're full service activities. They provide uh, the breadth of services to the entire uh, DoD community. I should also point out that the DoD community that I speak to is about is made up of about 25% uh, academics. So it's not just people inside the, the DoD. It's where we have contracts for people doing research or development for us. This is kind of a list of the, uh, the equipment we have out there, about 17 um, large systems today. The other important part here to point out, I should point out the previous chart too, is we changed our measurement scheme. When we were in the 90s, we talked about gigawatts. In the uh, 21st century, we talked about Naboo's. Naboo is simply a name we use to describe a set of weighted benchmarks. And I just want to emphasize the point, you have to measure the performance on your machines against the workloads you really want to run to have any idea what the right machine view really is. Gigaflops shows nice trends over time to show the technology is advanced, but it doesn't really tell you anything about how a particular application is. So I mean, it's just an paramount that you keep those kind of measurements. The other thing we do is we keep a supercomputer about four years. Um, we do the kind of math to figure out what it costs you to maintain it in four years. Buying a new one and maintaining that is cheaper. It's just simple economics to try to tell upgrading your machines. We upgrade them every year. The old machines, we actually can usually find someone else who wants them and can take some. But if you do the math, it's uh, the cost of the cost of maintenance versus the cost of procurement drives you to a very quick update schedule. You also can see in terms of the blue measurements or even the flop measurements on, on the chart that the newest machines you buy generally represent uh, almost 50% of our capability. So you think a machine that's four years old, it's, it's roughly 10% understand. So to be current in this, in this environment, you have to constantly refresh that, that base. Just some basic thoughts as we're talking, as I kind of thought that uh, the discussion was going to be mostly about the infrastructure that, that centers. There's obvious things on the one side that you have to have, you have to have computers, you have to have people. Um, power's a big issue nowadays. Our centers run in the, the three to five megawatt range for the most part. Um, that's growing. There's certainly other groups out there that are already in the 20 megawatt range, and there's plans for systems that are close to 50 megawatts. If you start getting to that kind of power range, you have to have your own power plant commercial. So in terms of planning for infrastructure, that's a huge, a huge concern in the future. Another part I want to make here is it's about people too. You can get all the, the technology pieces right, but if you don't have the right people with the right skills, you're never going to succeed. Um, while it looks like it's a standard IT shop in some sense, because the hardware looks a lot. Look at a supercomputer rack of equipment, look at a server rack of equipment, they look an awful lot alike. But the reality in terms of uh, systems administration is it's very different. There's a relatively small segment of people in the country that have the right skills to offer the There's also behind the scenes things. If you don't have the right people behind the scenes to buy your machines, keep the people in place, they do the finances, it doesn't work either. So, general comments. That's it, uh, kind of our investments we've had in this last year. Get some idea what it costs to buy a new machine. Um, the other point I guess I want to make is with the last line there. We've made some, the supercomputers are not sufficient and the world is changing. So we had to find ways to keep our, our centers easier to access and to provide different kind of workflows. So we've pulled out quite a bit of money in the last few years that better infrastructure inside our different computing centers. That's probably focusing on uh, storage and uh, kind of an active file system uh, per center. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Okay, back to the benchmarks I talked about. We run a set of benchmarks, which are the uh, numbers across the top. They're weighted when we do our procurements. Along the side, you see different systems we currently own. Uh, the newest ones aren't there yet. There. I haven't had a chance to put them in the chart. But what this gives you is tremendous information as to what application you want to run on which machine that you might have access to. You know, as, you, as you all saw on this chart, the, the top and bottom, the systems are, are newer. 
as you would expect in newer systems, are generally faster. So the solution is sooner. But it also is not I always true. There. Yeah, sure. there are certain cases, certain applications, you're better off running on some of the older machines because they're actually faster for that application. This is useful for us to buy systems. It's also useful for us to talk to our customers and the individuals who make decisions as to what machines and applications run on so they can make smart choices. Also, not just about buying hardware and operating it. GE's and computer center requires a lot of infrastructure. You've got to replace the coolers, you've got to replace the chillers, you've got to change the uh, backup power supplies. Um, sometimes you've got to actually build new buildings. In our case, we have six major centers. We have four affiliated centers, which are run by other parts of the Department of Defense and use some of our processes. But we've gone to great lengths over the last uh, eight years to try to make our centers look more alike. So we have common services. And that's what you see inside a uh, series of common services. It makes us more efficient. We can do more with less. And it allows us to create environments for our, our customers where if they learn how to use the equipment at one site, they know where the scratch directory space is. It's the same at all the sites. You have to write at one site or not perfectly, but some are transparent to another site. And we're trying to improve individual customers' productivity. Storage, a uh, big deal for us. It's gone up tremendously. We have actually it starts to move all the way up about 30 petabytes of storage today. Um, and that's just growing. You see the trend lines there. By the end of this year, we'll probably have 40, 45. Um, it'll keep growing. Right now, there's no end in sight. That's a huge problem. Okay. It's hard to maintain, it's expensive, yet that's the trend. How are you going to be able to actually actively use most of that data? Just reading and writing, it'll take us, we have to change generations of tape drives every two to four years. It takes us almost that whole time, that period of time, just to rewrite the old tapes to the new tapes. There's so much data to store. Hey, services. What are the right services to operate as centers? Software configuration management. As I said, most of our customers bring their own applications, but we also have a fair, fairly large number of commercial applications. We have 17 systems.